Mr. Dreben, uh, does the president uh, have immunity uh, or uh, are you saying that there's no immunity, presidential immunity, even for official acts? Yes, Justice Thomas, but I think that it's important to put in perspective the position that we are offering the court today. Uh, the president, as the head of the Article II branch, can assert as applied Article II objections to criminal laws that interfere with an exclusive power possessed by the president or that prevent the president from accomplishing his constitutionally assigned functions. That is the constitutional doctrine that currently governs the separation of powers. What petitioner is asking for is a broad blanket immunity that would protect the president, a former president, from any criminal exposure absent impeachment and conviction, which has never happened in our history. And we submit that is not necessary in order to assure that the president can perform all of the important tasks that the Constitution reposes in him. Uh, over, over in not so distant past, uh, the presidents or certain presidents have engaged in uh, various uh, activity coups or uh, pro operations like Operation Mongoose when I was uh, a teenager, uh, and yet there were no prosecutions. Yes. Uh, why? Uh, if, you, if what you're saying is right, it, it would seem that that would have been ripe for uh, criminal prosecution of someone. So Justice Thomas, I think this is a central question. The reason why uh, there have not been prior criminal prosecutions is that there were not crimes. And I want to explain why there are layers of safeguards that assure that former presidents do not have to lightly assume criminal liability for any of their official acts. At the outset, there is a statutory construction principle that is applicable here. It arises when there is a serious constitutional question about applying a criminal statute to the President's acts. It is not, and I'm sure that we will discuss this, that no statute can apply to the President in his official capacity absent a designation of the President in it. But there is a principle that if there is a serious constitutional question, courts will strive to construe the statute so that it does not apply to the President. In addition to that, the President, I think has been mentioned earlier, has access to advice from the Attorney General, and it would be a due process problem to prosecute a President who received advice from the Attorney General that his actions were lawful, absent the kind of collusion or conspiracy that itself represented a criminal violation, which I don't really see as being a realistic well. option. And then if I could say one more thing, because you raised the question about a potential overseas taking of life. And the Office of Legal Counsel has addressed this quite specifically. There is a background principle of criminal law called the public authority uh, exception to liability, and it is read into federal law unless Congress takes specific action to oust it, which it never has done as far as I am aware. And in a case in which the uh, president sought to engage in overseas activity that would result in the taking of life, OLC did not say the federal murder statute doesn't apply. That would be the, the thrust of my friend's argument on clear statement. Instead, OLC went through an extensive analysis on why the public authority defense would prevent it from being considered a violation of law to go after a terrorist, for example.